Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report Hour 3, which is one of our favorite hours of the week. We uh, do our issues on preparedness, civil defense, martial law, and earth changes. And uh, one of our favorite guests, of course, and hosts also of his own radio show, John Moore, is here. And uh, Alexander Bachman, and we'll be back next week. Uh, John, what's the latest news? And again, uh, maybe you have some announcements to make as well. Well, thank you, Dr. Bill. Good to be here as always. Um, first, we have uh, from an FBI agent um, on the East Coast. He's telling uh, people he goes to church with, Catholic Church, that, uh, quote unquote, martial law is going to be here sooner than we think. Uh, the next update is from uh, a friend who went to a suburban Denver store specializing in reloading supplies, powder, primers, brass, and bullets. Right. He got there this morning uh, right when they were supposed to open. He found a line. He talked to the guys in the front of the line. They'd been there since 11 p.m. last night waiting for the store to open. Um, right. When he got there and when he got inside finally and was they waited on, they were limiting the customers to one uh, box of primers per customer and other limitations in place. I also spoke to a friend running a gun store down in uh, north central Arkansas. Uh, they're out of all, all desirable powders and primers they can't get and brass they can't get. Uh, basically everything's sold out and the distributors uh, are telling them they don't know when they're going to get in, get in new supplies. That's happening nationwide. Those are just two examples of what's happening in nationwide. Uh, people are scared. And um, they um, are, are taking care of business. They're getting what they need to get. Um, and um, uh, we're off to the races. It's a repeat of what happened in the fall of 1974, 94, but it's on steroids. Uh, it's, it's just an incredible um, yeah. situation here. Mm -hmm. Let, let's uh, look at the uh, what we call the forest and the trees. Um, we have a couple of different events converging. We have Fukushima Daiichi, which is now a year and a half ago, almost two years ago now, coming up. We have um, the Macondo drill problem, which has still displaced the loop current. You were the one actually that sent that story over to us, and we confirmed with the Frascati Institute and Dr. Zangari, who was also working with NOAA. Um, you're the source of both those stories. The fact is they have moved the heavy equipment away from the coast. They are worried about different earth changes occurring. We do have reports that in the next two years, coronal mass ejections are going to uh, cause major devastation to the, uh, to the power grid in North America. We have uh, had Michael Malufon, who is inside the government for 30 years in multiple departments. And his book is literally, in a sense, tame compared to the reports of Mishu Ikaku, the physicist and 40,000 scientists that are petitioning the Senate and Congress. We have no action whatsoever on the part of the government to deal with either monitoring radiation coming from Fukushima, hardening the grid, improving the power blackout uh, status of our from cyber attacks, which are getting increasingly active from not only Iran but China from the Blue Army. And we have <clears throat> increasing evidence that the Chinese have got troop movements and activity in Mexico and on the Mexican Guatemalan border. They even have missiles based there. We have the Russians, and this is something that happened yesterday. I don't know if you knew this, but I talked to Alexander Bachman that there was a major explosion at a deep underground base where they had these centrifuges making highly enriched uranium. And we believe it's a, a Mossad operation that happened yesterday. Um, possibly hundreds of scientists are trapped down there and technicians. Many of them are Russian. They're the ones leading this. They started their contract in 1975 to build a Bashir reactor. Um, this is... Uh, if you want to call a shot across the bow, Russia is directly involved with the Bashir reactor. Their scientists are probably dead or locked down there, miles down, in one of the deepest facilities in the world. They knew they couldn't get a bunker buster down there, so somebody uh, obviously had some kind of explosion that, that literally closed off the tunnels to the, the uh, high-speed centrifuges. So if you put it all together, they kicked the can down the road to May 18th for the debt ceiling, and they basically said, well, whatever we spend... We're going to just tack onto the debt. This is Bonner and a bunch of idiot Republicans that went along with this because they didn't want a downgrading of the uh, debt. When they are printing more money, they're devaluing the money in your pocket, your pension funds, and your mortgage. As we speak, we are heading toward a financial Armageddon this year. And I'm not being facetious to say this, but I see a bank holiday as what I call level one martial law. And I think it could be as little as five days to two weeks, but it's coming. 
right. it's coming. And it, it may be only just a bunch of guys standing around the banks and all the ATM machines shut down, which means, by the way, unless you have cash in your pocket, you can't buy gas, unless you have silver or gold coins, which people will try to use to pay things. Right now, the government hasn't locked down, said we can't pay with those or with cash if you have cash in your mattress. But the fact is, <clears throat> most people, only about 6 or 7% of transactions are cash. Most people don't even have cash. they got bank cards. Well, uh, here, what, and here's a heads up, Dr. Bill. Uh, people who keep large amounts of cash, generally it's $100 bills just for convenience sake. There's, there's been scatter reports, I know you and I have talked about them, of uh, new $100 bills that will be issued. Uh, I think people may be well advised to transfer those $100 bills into $20 bills or into coins. They're, they're, basically, they're going to leave coins alone because it's not worth messing with. Um, and that would be dollar coins coins, half-dollar coins, and so forth, uh, just plain coins, not even silver. Uh, so you have something that would have recognizable uh, value and would not have to be turned in for new currency, which is something that's been done in other countries, not in our country, but it has happened before. And we got these reports, for example, the armored car robbers that uh, robbed an armored car and got money they couldn't do anything with because it was the wrong color and has not yet been issued. So uh, people need do something to protect you know, the words, they, got, they got money pre they got money pre issue is what you're saying exactly exactly yeah. uh, now, uh, you're talking uh, about rainbow money is what you're talking about they bought they, they stole rainbow money that was in a bank locked in a pallet stuck where in the back of the bank vault that the bank was in the it was an armored car is what it was but regardless oh um yeah. Uh, something else. Uh, Diane Feinstein introduced legislation yesterday. I've been to Thomas.gov, which is a con library of Congress. It is not there on their website yet. Uh, they say one, two, to a couple of days typically. Well, it's been a couple of days. It's not there. We'll be looking Monday to see if it's been posted. But so far, no, there's been no public record of exactly what's in Senate 150, which is Diane Feinstein's legislation. I'm very anxious to see the details of what this woman's proposed. Well, there's three things that I see are the consequences of this. Number one, if they try to take uh, guns against vets, there'll be a pushback. Number two, uh, what they've done is they've crystallized that any, I, when I get up in the morning, as I said on the show many times, I thank God for my family, my friends, and that patriots like yourself, John. Secondly, I thank God for Obama and his minions of hell, because they force the people to finally stop doing what I call vicious ignorance and blaming us and saying we're nuts because we bring all these things. We're just damn well conspiracy theorists. They can wake up and smell a coffee, that this is not a joke, that if they've had pension funds, equity in their home, which has now been stolen, it's been stolen, and it continues to be stolen, by the way. When you print mortgage-backed securities of the tune of $45 billion a month, that means you're buying bad debt and making any mortgage or any property value out there worth, worthless. So what they're doing is they're making the dollar more and more worthless because their eventual scheme, and people need to understand this, is they're going to take over the world using debt. Now, people say, well, how could America do that? Well, if you own 90% of the world's currency and you print even more money, and you force the rest of the world to take it eventually, especially if you're loaning the money, you take over the world. And that's what America is all about. America Absolutely. is going to mutate into the mark of the beast. And I'm, people say, well, how do you know that, Dr. Deagle? I know it supernaturally, I know it naturally. I've talked to experts like Tex Mars who wrote uh, Project Lucid. I've actually got the patent in 1998 from a Lockheed Martin technologist after I did a lecture at the old Calvin Coleman Church in downtown Denver. I took care of employees working on the Virtual World Project for six years. I can tell you I know exactly what's happening. And what people need to realize is the reason why we know is because we are Christians, we are believers, we know the testament of the Bible is true, and it's happening. This is not like conjecture. This is not like, oh, my God, you know, Deagle, you're just, uh, you know, it would be pleasant if I was crazy. It would be pleasant if I could get a shot, an antipsychotic, to make this go away. But it's not. It's, <laughs> no, not. it's not. It's not. Listen, people out there, I'm not Forrest Gump. I don't have the Forrest Gump syndrome. I just happen to be a believer with a backbone, just like Absolutely. you, John. Absolutely. Believers with backbones. We're not special people. We just are revolts by the ignorance of the population, the vicious ignorance to attack us because they don't want to believe it's that bad. But we are heading toward a bank holiday probably this year. Welcome back, 
to the Nutra Medical Report. And um, John, you mentioned a couple of other things on the break. I want you to repeat those because a lot of people think, well, I'm just blowing smoke when I say I think it'll be a bank holiday. Look, you cannot continue adding debt. And the deal that Bonner made is disgusting. I'm almost as pissed off with him as I am with Obama. And the Republicans better get their damn back together. They're just the Republican side of the snake party. Why don't they get their act together and realize you don't need to destroy the social safety net at the same time. You don't need to have a hundred and almost 80 bases around the world. You don't need to be continuing to promulgate wars and supporting tyranny and paying in to, for weapons to be you know, given to these so-called our Muslim terrorists so that they can go in and shoot regime change Syria. You don't need to be going and collaborating with the crazy satanic Jews that are going to bombing and blowing up the Bashir reactor and in, in, uh, in these facilities which is going to guarantee down the road there'll be a thermonuclear war. And, of course, if you eventually push the Iranians far enough, because they don't want to do this. They want to buy our CDs and genes. They don't want to be in, locked into a death struggle with America and the West. But if you push them, they're going to use their biopreparat asymmetric weapons against us, and we're going to see Americans literally holding their throat as they drop dead blue to the floor, bleeding from every orifice. And people say, Dr. Deagle, you're a little graphic. I guess what? You can't handle what I know, and you better damn well listen, because what's going to happen if we don't stop doing it with leaders like Obama, we're going to be facing an end to this nation that is going to be very nasty, very right. nasty indeed. Well, well, very Dr. nasty. Bill, people, what I was saying, what I was saying yeah, yeah. on the break was uh, a quote from the uh, Communist Party USA uh, publication where, where the Jan date of Jan 18th of January, where they were praising the efforts of Hussein Obama to disarm the American people. Okay. Uh, I think I think that's very telling. You're kidding. You know, uh, one of the things is if if we both of us decide not to do radio anymore, we could probably get some late night hosting a show of comedy, just telling the truth. We don't need even to actually uh, right. say this is real news. Just may just pretend we're making it up, but it's actually just reading from reports we get or contacts we have inside the government, inside Homeland Security and the Pentagon and Special Forces, which you have and I have. And when we compare notes, we say. Oh, my God. And when people want to kind of spit on us, let me tell you out there, you got to get out of the dollar. you got to get out of dollar-denominated uh, uh, things. you better get your food, water, and everything, your self-protection ready this year. you better decide that you are a prepper. If you're not a prepper, God help you, because within three days, there's not going to be food on the shelves. And if you just have something like a five- or ten-day bank holiday, you cannot imagine what people get like on the fourth day. Day four, just like it is to say in Israel, when the body rots, the, the society rots too. It gets really nasty. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, John, well, tell us more. What, what's happening in your show lately? What? And of course, uh, well, uh, uh, the, the, I've been focusing a lot on the Second Amendment and making sure that and I was quoting United States Code uh, Title Ten this morning. Uh, once you understand who the militia is, the argument's finished. The, the federal militia of the United States, by current law, not antiquated, out-of-date law, but current law on January 25, 2013, all able-bodied male adults in the United States, under age 64 and younger, all able-bodied adults, 64 and younger, are part of the federal militia. Now, in, in most states... Excuse me, that's 45 and younger for the federal militia. I got that backwards. 45 and younger for the federal militia, all adult males. Now, in most states, the state militia is adult males and females, 64 and younger. Right. So most adults in this country are either members of the federal militia or the militia, or both. And it's not an option. It's not something you can you have any choice about. You're a member it's, of the militia if you're an able-bodied man or woman, age are younger. That's right. the way it is, and that's current law. But and I, I want to have people that make it... They the want weapons they want to ban are the weapons most suitable for use by the militia. Center fire uh, uh, rifles that uh, accept uh, detachable magazines that are semi-automatic. Right. So what we're having is a situation where they want to disable the militia now. Just use, uh, pretend we'll use our thinking caps, just like, you know, uh, one of these children's programs on television, and you hear the music in the background, da, 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 you know, like right. you know, the, the game shows. Right. Let's pretend it's, you know, one of these things doesn't belong here kind of thing. What reasons do you think in their crazy mind they'd want to do to disable and disarm the public? What's the reason? Especially when they're having toward financial Armageddon where they're printing money like it doesn't exist and out of thin air and they're doing a criminal activity which is thieving out of everybody's pocket, not even Americans, but anybody anywhere in the world that has anything denominated in U.S. dollars, 
they can be a prostitute in Bulgaria they're being stolen from. The, the historical and legal uh, obligation of the militia, federal and state, is to defend life, liberty, and property. That is the historical and legal obligation of the militia, both federal and state. Right. Well, and, one of the things I tell people repeatedly is they should get into their local militia by contacting the sheriff, getting a concealed carry permit, and learning how to use their guns and properly store them in their home. They should get, uh, they don't even necessarily join a full militia where they go out in a big group, but they should talk to their sheriff, get deputized, and be ready, and also get involved with CERT, which is to see the CERT training with your local fire departments. Get, become a volunteer fire person. Have an emergency bag, bug out bag and kit for emergencies. Remember, when things get really bad, you may be the only emergency or medically trained person around that can deal with a fracture, a wound, flying debris, or anything. And if you don't have these basic skills and even very basic equipment like tourniquets, things to irrigate wounds, things to deal with splinted fractures or compound fractures, you're it. You're the only one around. And don't expect an ambulance to arrive because they're going to be freaked out or, or at home. Uh, so, John, tell us what you recommend, and maybe we can go over that list because I guess we uh, we uh, uh, we have a lot of time together today. So you'll be able to do a lot more talking than usual. Okay. Uh, what do you tell people? Uh, what do you tell people to, to to do? Because I don't think people grasp. You know, one of the things I find we have the best of the best here in Genesis Network, listening and on these private radio networks, <clears throat> but even they don't grasp the urgency of this. It's always good to be a year early than a day late. I mean, if you're a year or two Absolutely. or three years early, my God, you can't imagine what how desperate it'll be if you don't have enough food, water, or self-protection. Well, you can't imagine what it'll be like if you get an army of guys on motorcycles come up your driveway and say, give us all your stuff, we're going to kill you on well, the spot. Let's talk about the goal. The goal is to live a life where you do not have to live a life of anguish or fear because of what the government may or may not do. That's right. the goal. Now, to achieve that goal, first get your spiritual house in order. That's the single most important thing anybody can do for themselves. Exactly. If you haven't done that, I don't care if you've got uh, several uh, semi-tractor trailer loads of, of uh, food and supplies and, and so forth. If you haven't got your spiritual house in order, you're hopelessly lost. So do that first. Right. And then, after that, comes water. Water is number one. Potable water, you, you cannot live for more than a couple of days before you die a miserable death uh, from lack of water. So get well, your yourself uh, and you know I, I know you have some uh, water filters you offer at your website yeah we have uh, a couple of we have the pure water system which i call our base station which is above 200 with a 12 volt pump but we also have the ready store with the straws and the pumps and the other things and you have them on your website too the libertyman.com i do but but dr bill uh, there's over 300 million people in this country there's not enough water filters for everybody that needs one is there if everybody actually took us seriously, even let's say let's say five percent, everybody, yeah, yeah, let's say five percent of the people listening today, we either live or rebroadcast, decided to do it. The water filters available through pretty well every company would be gone in a week. They'd be gone. That's right. Gone. Gone. People don't know that. Welcome back, and um, I just got some reports, too, from um, uh, Professor McCanny, and uh, you have him on your show regularly. Professor McCanny is doing, by the way, some interesting research in, uh, how could I say it, South uh, or Central America. Uh, this is since December 21st. He's found some very interesting things, in which we, we won't give any uh, heads up on. Uh, but we we would do want to say that there's a number of things happening this year. First off, the... the Current H3N2 V flu is the worst in 45 years. It is the highest replicant count, so it's killing more people than any flu in 45 years. It's a prelude to a pandemic because you know they want to have a swine flu or swine avian flu pandemic somewhere down the road that will really kill people. This one is warming up, uh, and it's likely to be not peaking for the next four to six weeks, which right now in the last week or two, it's considered 8.4% of the cause of deaths in America is due to this flu. That's a lot. Flu or uh, pneumonia caused by this flu is killing a lot of people. And um, some of them, they say they have pre-existing conditions, but I'm sure it's killing young people, too, just like three years ago. But it's more lethal by a fairly good margin than the uh, 2009 flu. So that's a big deal. The next thing is the idea of CMEs. We have coronal mass ejection, space weather, 
And people need to realize that we're having an awfully cold winter in the north. Uh, I talked to Robert Felix, who can't come on the program today, but Robert was telling me that he's looking at all the reports. And uh, the evidence is very clear, and it's following exactly what Dr. Habibil Adamazatov said, Dr. Easterbrook, and other scientists, that we're heading, and it will be completely clear by next year, we're heading into a, quote, cooling period, which is a maunder, M-A-U-N-D-E-R, if you want to Google it, maunder type, cooling period or mini ice age. That cooling period, according to the, uh, the Chinese scientists and Russians, with ring studies of trees, etc., suggests that this cooling period will last to 2067 to 2070. So, in other words, we're heading into it now. It's going to take us a long time to come out of it, and it's going to drop the temperature considerably. It's going to crush crop formation up in the northern latitudes, and it'll cause massive population migrations and increase snow and rainfall in the northern latitudes, and it's going to house a major geopolitical disaster for huge populated areas of the northern hemisphere. Uh, John, any comments on that? Well, it, it, you have to have global warming before you can have global cooling, uh, which, of course, the planet is warming up from the inside out, which is causing uh, freshwater ice to melt in Greenland and the Antarctic, which, of course, will eventually lead to a new ice age. Right. In other words, what happens is you heat up from below, you have the permafrost melting, and you have increased injection of water into the atmosphere. You also have an area of the cosmos where there's a lot more cosmic particles that act as micronuclei for raindrops. And because we're in this zone of space, we're going to have increased rainfall. And rainfall turns into snow. Snow turns into changing the albedo of the Earth, and eventually your temperature crashes, and it doesn't have to crash far. Five to seven degrees difference is all you need, and you've got a major, major catastrophe in terms of, of accumulated snowfall that for even a full ice age. You know, we would call a 105,000-year type ice age or 11,000-year ice age. So I think we're having, at the very least, a cooling period, and that means that we're going to have a lot more food shortages, and we're going to have a massive forcing of population to southern latitudes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I could not that'll, agree that'll come over time. It'll take, come over time. It's not going to get boom overnight. But if we're getting the warning signs of it now, and it means extreme weather is also very hard in crops, whether it's too hot some days or some weeks and too cold or too rainy the other days. And we saw this across western Canada where it destroyed a lot of the crops, not because it was just uh, it was too rainy at the wrong times and then too damn hot a few months later, which dried everything out and killed everything. So uh, plus we have increased ultraviolet light, which, you know, uh, Stan Dale talked about and Dr. They talked about two new bands of ultraviolet light, which are impinging on our crops. And all we need is a, is a UV surge, which can hurt, occur with a CME. When you have a CME, you can get strobing with high-energy ultraviolet light, and that can kill your crops. All your grassy plants, just like the Bible said, and uh, any fruit trees and blood, and boom, bloom will die. Um, that's a big deal. So what people need to realize is that we are going to have famine coming in the future. It won't be a total famine, but it'll be a famine, especially with the... Western, you know, United States realizing 120,000 farms supply 75% of the food in America. If those trucks stop rolling because of a coronal mass ejection, in three days everybody would be starving. And you can imagine how nuts people will be on the fourth day when they realize that there's nothing left in the grocery shelves and they have reduced water because they're going to get sewage backing up in all homes in the, in the cities. And if they give much more water, the people's toilets are going to back up and they're going to have sewage backing up in their tubs and their sinks. Right. That's going to get nuts. Well, the first drink you take of contaminated water, it's a one-way ticket to dehydration, diarrhea, and death. Yeah, people don't realize that the largest cause of death in the world is bad bacteria in water. That's right. That's the number one cause of death. Next is malaria, a third or other types of malnutrition disorders, but the largest cause of death is bad water. That's why Absolutely. when we do missionary work, we send over people to drill wells and have water filtration systems because the first thing that's going to kill little children, especially newborns and, and babies, is going to be bad water, and elderly is bad water. Absolutely. Nothing else even comes close. Yeah, it really does. Uh, John, you know, we, I think we have time to go over the 10-plus uh, list, and uh, I promised to put up a, the, an update. I also had a number of calls of people asking me, Dr. Deagle, how come you don't post up those weapons you talked about that well, you know, I'm not really too interested in getting a visit from Homeland Security, but I think if people are inventive, I'd like to see what they invent. Maybe they can send copies to me, but it's real simple. Uh, but I'd like to hear your 10-plus list first. Okay, uh, well, I already went over water, so let's just jump with number two here, right. um, which has <laughs> become the real important. Well, at least one thirty caliber rifle and 500 rounds of ammunition per adult. Uh, next, we have cast iron cookware and skillets with cast iron lids. Uh, you need cookware that can be used indoors as well as outdoors. Uh, 
Um, number four, a truck, preferably diesel. You need carrying capacity for people, supplies, and equipment. Uh, next on the list, a um, heavy-duty canvas tent, four-season tent, or heavy-duty canvas tarpaulins for emergency shelter for yourselves or unexpected guests. And by the way, the one that I recommend now that you might want to even carry on your site, too, it's a fantastic uh, tenting system, which I strongly recommend. is the, the better option even than having a... Uh, a getaway cabin or an RV is to get a, a uh, turtle tough shelter. These will turtle withstand tough is, a, is good equipment, and if you can get your hands on them, by all means, do so. Yeah, and the, um, the smaller ones are 16 feet across, 8 feet high, will hold 10 people. The larger one, which is 25 feet across, 9 feet high, will hold about 25 people. And uh, these are uh, the prices are about a quarter of these four season heavy tents. They're carryable in the back of your minivan or your truck. Uh, their uh, packages of the unit pieces of it are no more than 50 pounds, so a, a strong woman can carry those, or uh, and it can be erected by two people in about three hours. So these are ideal. Plus, they have the way they they tarp it up. Even if you had water that was flooding in, it won't flood into your tent because it's going to have it zipped up on the inside. Uh, you can even have a part of it as a greenhouse. You have a stove in the center of it. You can have LED lights and a. And a uh, uh, a little package right, to have those LED some lights. options that they offer, which are really great options. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm planning on getting a, a turtle tough shelter. I think this is better than getting an RV. I think, you, as you mentioned, you need to get a truck that's primarily diesel or can use biodiesel. But the next step, and it has to be pre uh, EMP, in other words, it's not, it doesn't have an electronic ignition crap in it, so it's an older truck. And then people should get a turtle tough shelter. This is a big deal. The number six on the list is 900 grain, 900 pounds of grain per person per year. Now, 900 pounds sounds like a lot. It's 18 50 pound tax that you can get for anywhere from 10 to 20 dollars per 50 pounds, uh, properly stored so the weevils won't hatch out and live. Uh, I recommend at least two year supply per person. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, you can buy oxygen concentrate. You can buy oxygen absorber packs to put in the big uh, uh, buckets. And you can even uh, bubble in uh, and put in uh, uh, basically dry ice, which will help to push out the air out of there, too. Dry ice is good. Uh, absolutely. Uh, number seven, a comprehensive medical kit. Are you offering any of those right now, Dr. Bill? Uh, no, I tried to uh, get, get – uh, no, I'm working on some companies, but I don't have that uh, down yet. Right now, I recommend Galls uh, is one of the companies. Galls it's really is a place for... where EMTs and paramedics get their stuff, and, yeah, and they have yeah. professional-grade equipment. Uh, number eight, this is kind of generic, heavy leather, high-top boots. Get your boots and trousers and shirts and, and gloves from the same place where the, 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 the plumbers, carpenters, and farmers, construction workers buy their equipment. You need heavy-duty uh, outdoor equipment. What's sold at sporting goods? stores is meant for light use and recreational use. It will not stand up to manual labor. Um, yeah. I can hear the music. And one of the places I like, it, I like Kabilis is one of the places, but uh, you want to have go to these kind of uh, stores for overalls and gear that will withstand outside work that won't rip apart, and overalls are real important. Back in a moment with more wisdom from Don Moore, and we'll continue. Welcome back, and um, John, we're down to the, uh, I think I'm item number nine, Vacuum Pack Heritage Seeds, and we have a new uh, Heritage Seed Company. We have the Ready Store, which is really good for seeds. Uh, we're also, by the way, going to be bringing back on Seed Crop. We have a Seed Crop supplier here based out of California that brings us amazing uh, to great superfood, and you want to make sure you're not having GM food. We're going to bring on Jeffrey Smith in the next couple of weeks. Jeffrey, of course, and his scientist colleagues have discovered promoter genes and stop genes don't work properly, and of 54 different strains of genetically modified foods, they literally are switching on and off genes inside you uh, that can turn on cancer, autoimmune disease, and wipe out your immune system against pathogens like botulinum toxin, Clostridium difficile, etc. These literally are the seeds of death, uh, these GM seeds. They are the seeds of famine. They are the seeds of Armageddon. And if people say, oh, well, you're just exaggerating. No, we're talking about sober, non-Christian scientists who are saying, oh, my God, look what we found. These promoter genes that are from the uh, cauliflower mosaic virus turn on gene complexes that don't turn off. And they have no idea which genes are going to turn on and off until they look afterwards and say, oh, my God, look what it did. 
And now we're realizing that these maniacs had no freaking idea what they're up to and are inserting this now, and these genes jump. They can jump from one species in one plant to another because they're a plasmid. They can cause things like, you know, we have a super weed, a pigweed down in Louisiana and so on that's grown like crazy because it's Roundup resistant, and these new gene changes, these promoter genes, make this an aggressive, what I call an Armageddon weed. And people say, oh, no, this is not happening. I said, I'm sorry to tell you, uh, and I'm an optimist, we have opened up the uh, bottomless pit of genetic monstrosities, Absolutely. and the damn things are out. And people don't realize, I call it the taco chip from hell, the BT Bacillus thuringiensis gene complex that can get in little bees and cause colony collapse disorder. They can also get in your gut and can cause your gut bacteria to produce BT neurotoxins forever. In other words, you have a chip, a potato chip, or a, a, a corn chip, with BT toxin genes in it, it can actually jump into the bacteria into the bacteria in your gut, and your gut bacteria, unless you are completely cleaned out and then recolonized with new probiotics, will produce BT neurotoxins forever. Is that nuts or what? It, well, it's crazy. I mean, the, the men and women involved in this are involved in just absolute uh, monstrosities of what they're what they are doing. Right, when people want to say we're just speculating, no, 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 no. And that's why when people say, well, you know, what we're saying goes way beyond anything like Coast to Coast Radio or these other shows. We're dealing with hard science. When we get Jeffrey Smith on and we'll be talking about this, we're going to give you actual references, too. Uh, by the way, we'll just move on to the book. You, know, I, you recommend Dare to Prepare with Holly Dale. I recommend the CERT manuals as well, which are basic life support, basic cardiac support. You have on your site the Liberty Man, the paratrooper bicycle. That's a fantastic device. You can also get these little carriers that you can use. You can buy it at Amazon. The troop bicycle is probably the best thing because you can ride it, carry three to 500 pounds of supplies and equipment. That's right. And, of course, hand crank radios, you carry them on your site. We have them over on the ready store. Uh, radiation detectors, we recommend that you get the radiation detectors from uh, Less EMF. We have the best ones available. The uh, Inspector EXP and the Inspector Plus are fantastic. Uh, we talk about radiation protocols. You need to understand out there, they're putting some kind of pseudo shell around uh, Fukushima. Have you talked much on your show about Fukushima? And what's not happening? not recently. It's kind okay. of calmed down on my, on my show. Okay, well, we've been uh, dealing with daily, weekly updates and what's happening. They're going to put a shell around uh, cooling pool number four. We are seeing still burps of radiation, major burps. Uh, this is not going to stop. In fact, it's going to continue and increase in the accumulated bioaccumulation of radiation is poisoning crops across the west, the northern hemisphere. And it's my contention that in five years, the level of radiation in the northern hemisphere will be equivalent to what it is now in Japan, which basically makes it a danger to have a pregnancy. So uh, what we're looking at is literally, you know, biogenetic Armageddon. And it's already happening. We're not saying, oh, this could happen. This is the consequences of literally a nuclear war without the cities on fire. Because what happens is the amount of radioisotopes being released from Japan is equivalent to a nuclear war. People need to grasp that. They also need to grasp this facility was a MOX reactor fuel plutonium detonator uh, fuse for nuclear weapons facility. Basically, was a, it was an occult nuclear weapons facility, making nuclear weapons. So the Japanese are not, are, people say, oh, they're not a nuclear power. Hogwash. Uh, if they decide to take their very fancy rockets, which the Japanese have top-level rockets that can go anywhere in the world, and put up any kind of uh, satellite or whatever, and they marry it to warheads, the Japanese are a third nuclear power rated behind Russia and, and America instantly. Absolutely. instantly. In fact, they have a hell of a lot more material than even Israel in terms of nuclear material. A hell really? of a lot more. Yeah, a lot more. In fact, the Ogi Maru, which is, came from Russia back at the end of the Soviet era, had so much radioisotopes, everybody, including Greenpeace, were protesting and bringing it from Moscow and from Russia over to, uh, to, to Japan, the Ogi Maru ship, if you go back and look at that. Um, next thing, of course, is we have Renutridine. Everybody should be taking it every day because the effect of chronic low-level radiation, and I'm doing a lecture for the Academy of Environmental Medicine, is mitochondrial degradation. You need antipathogenics because their immune systems are breaking down. Alamax, Alamed, Silver 100, Immunomax, Nutrimune. And uh, we have a you know first line of defense kit. We also have a flu kit. We have a biological uh, radiation detection protection kit. Uh, I think everybody should have a greenhouse. Uh, let's talk about that. If you don't have one, and I like the one, the systems trading one, uh, that you can get at Home Depot or Sam's Club or Amazon. If you don't have that, at least have 100 mil poly and 2x4s and index screws so you can make one. Uh, and uh, the first level power, I found out from all the different sources at the moment, 
is what's called a Generac. I got a Generac 20 kilowatt generator. You can get up to 40, 48 kilowatts propane or natural gas. Um, if you're in a windy area, like on a coast or in a mountain, you can get a wind generator, but you have to have backup power. We know the lithium pyrophosphate batteries are the best batteries you can get that will last 20 years or to 30 years. Or a new technology, which my nephew is a scientist in Silicon Valley that developed, uh, which is a compression thing, but it's used for big power systems like, you know, mega industry. We want it miniaturized, and I'm going to try to see if I can get them to miniaturize it so we can have literally you store your power as compressed air. So literally, whether it's wind or whatever, you literally store it as compressed air. Uh, and they literally can store, you know, you know, kilowatts, you know, 100 kilowatts, 500 kilowatts of power as compressed air. And they already have these commercially available. Uh, wind generation, okay, but next year coming up, uh, we have what's called the V3 generators. Those are spinning tops, 22 times more efficient than a regular uh, solar panel. And we have the um, Zenith uh, solar out of Israel. The V3 generators are made in America. The, the Zenith are available right now from Israel. They have two... Uh, turnable dishes that focus the power on uh, on these high powered, uh, if you want, converters that will generate 11,000 watts of heat and 4,500 watts of electricity every day in the average latitude. That's a lot of, of power. That's a lot of power. So one of these doesn't take too much space. There are two poles. The dishes are about 10 feet across. They follow the sun around and uh, they're super efficient. So there's two different technologies. The V3 will be coming on the third quarter. The Zenith Solar is available now, but you got to ship from Israel. And I'm trying to find they, they have done tests here in California of the of the of the Zenith Solar system out of Israel, and their scientists there are top notch. Um, I tell people you need to have personal and group defenses. There's no point in you trying to defend your family, your home alone. You need a group. That's why when you look at things like uh, doomsday preppers, and you're an expert on this. In fact, you consult and train people on arms. And we have, of course, the castle defense system as well uh, that is available. So talk about that for a minute, John, because this is important. You know, it's not just getting trained in arms. It's getting trained in group defense of a place or if you want to call it a village or community. Because right. the two-week rule is two weeks hunker down your home, two months is about the maximum you can stay in your home, no matter what the hell happens. After two months, you need to be in a remote location with a group of people who can defend and literally reestablish civilization. Because if things haven't reestablished normal in two months, it's helter-skelter. Right. You can't stay there longer than two months. In other words, two months is the limit. Beyond that, you better be out of there because if there's anybody still surviving, you're going to have vicious gangs that have already raped, killed, and murdered a lot of people in order to still be alive. And if they manage to come up to your home and you don't have a, a group defense system, you're dead. Absolutely. Well, uh, we don't have time to really go into any detail, but uh, basically people need to organize themselves, train as a group, and um, uh, elect a leader to lead them in time of, of a crisis. You can't have group decisions when uh, there's a gang at your doorstep. You need to have a yeah. leader that will make the decisions for the group. You can get the DVDs, by the way, from Greg Evenson. If you just Google his name, his website comes up, although he's kind of hunkered down now in northern Michigan because he expects the, quote, proverbial to hit the fan. Uh, I'm going to do a major update to this list because I think we, there's a lot of new uh, things that have happened. Um, I like doomsday preppers, but you got to take it with a grain of salt. What we try to do here is just say, if you're not a prepper, why? Do um, you have an answer, John? I don't know why. <laughs> What's the excuse? <laughs> All our ancestors, were the reason why we're still alive today in the 21st century is because our ancestors were preppers. That's right. A very short period of time after the Second World War where people got lazy is an anomaly. If we are not preppers, there will be no future generations of mankind on this planet Agreed. with the with disasters coming. And uh, preppers, I'll tell you, once you're prepper, you also notice that you feel spiritually and mentally better, and you have enough to be able to help your local friends and neighbors. But the most important thing, we have to inspire everybody. Your greatest danger is not disaster in terms of climate and other things, it's your unprepared neighbors. <laughs>